we're going to be creating a starburst animation and this is something that we can ultimately incorporate into other projects. I'll start off by making a new composition. I'll go ahead and I'll call this starburst and we'll just use a width of 1920 by 1080 frame rate of 2997 and the background color of black is fine. I'll click OK and it's going to open up our new composition. I'm going to start off by turning on my title safe areas. So I'm going to come down here to the composition window and I'll click title action safe. This is going to place the title and action safe overlay onto my project. The reason I want this is because I want to know where the center of my object is. So this little target in the middle will indicate where that point of the composition actually is. Next we're going to use our pen tool to create a line. So I'll go ahead and grab my pen tool and I'm going to make sure that my fill is set to none. I'll click on the fill name to open the fill options, set this to none. Then we'll go to the stroke and we're going to specify a stroke color. We can always change the color later, but for now I'm just going to get a bright yellow. I'll also make sure my stroke width is set to something like a 12. Now I'm going to click at the very center of the composition. I'll hold down my shift key to constrain the alignment and I'll come up a little ways and click one more time. This is going to end up giving me a straight line in the middle of my composition. Next we'll come down to the timeline. I'm going to name this layer Starburst. We'll twirl open this layer. We're going to come to the add area and we're going to click on the triangle and we'll go ahead and select trim paths. This is going to allow us to have a new property that we can use to create animation for our particular element. I'm going to open this up and we're going to be keyframing start and end. For this particular project, I don't need my composition to nearly be so long. So I'm going to grab the ending of this particular element and just drag it in to about two seconds. And I'll change my work area so it's also set at two seconds. My playback head is currently at frame one. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to set keyframes for end and start. I'll go ahead and turn on keyframing for end. And as you can see, I get a keyframe. I'm going to change the value to zero. Then I'll go ahead and move out in time. So we'll move out to about one second and I'm going to change this value to 100. If we play the animation, you can see that the line is going to draw up from the beginning point and then end at 100% of its total length. I'm going to move my playback head back to the beginning and we're going to turn on keyframing for start as well. Again, I'm going to go from zero to 100. If we play the animation now, you're going to see that we really don't see anything and that's because these two properties are fighting with each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the keyframes on start and I'm just going to drag them up a few frames within my timeline. Now these are offset and if we rewind and play you'll see that we get a smaller line that is going to shoot up from the center of the composition towards the top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the keyframes. I'll right click to open up my keyframe assistant and we're going to select easy ease. If we play the animation now, you'll notice that the animation is just slightly smoother than it was before. In addition to adjusting the easy ease, we're also going to change the speed by using the speed graph. I'll start off by selecting my two start keyframes. I'm going to come to this icon right here, which is going to open up my graph editor. I want to be editing the speed graph. So I'm going to come down to this icon, which allows you to choose the graph type, and we're going to change it to edit speed graph. You should see a hump that's going to appear. This is a representation of the speed. The changes in the graph height indicate changes in speed. So if we had a straight line, that would be a level value and it would indicate constant speed. Higher values are indicated by increased speed or an increased hump. 
and by adjusting the rise and fall of the speed graph, we can control how quickly or slowly a value changes from keyframe to keyframe. I will go ahead and go back to my selection tool. Then I'm going to select on the keyframes, and when I click the keyframes, you're going to see that I have handles. I'm going to drag the ending handle towards the left about halfway, and I'm going to grab the beginning anchor point handle and drag it to the right again about halfway. This gives me a very steep slope, which is going to ensure that the animation happens very quickly. If we go ahead and rewind and watch the animation, you're going to see that part of the animation, when it gets near the end, it's a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and let's go back and select the ending keyframes and we'll do the same thing. We'll open the graph editor. I'm going to click on the points and drag the handles towards the center to increase the slope of the graph. Once I've done this, to exit the graph editor, I'll simply click this icon. If we go ahead and play our animation, you should notice that there's more acceleration with the speed. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our line. And instead of just copy pasting this layer, I'm going to use something called the repeater. In order to invoke the repeater, we're going to go to contents, add, and I'm going to select repeater. The repeater allows you to make duplicate copies of an element. So if we were to play the animation right now, you're going to see how I have three vertical lines that are doing the exact same thing. Instead of having our lines appear side by side, we want them to appear more around a circular type of shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the repeater. We'll go ahead and we'll increase the number of copies and I'm going to make eight. You can basically use the repeater to make as many copies as you need of a particular element. Then I'm going to open up the transform repeater and in this particular area, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the X value for position to zero. This is going to make all of the copies of my line appear right on top of each other. So now they're in the exact same location. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to rotation and we're going to rotate these around a 360 degree area. Because I want these equally placed, I can type in 360 divided by eight. And when I hit return, it's going to go ahead and perform the calculations for me. This is a really cool thing about After Effects in that you may know what the math is, but sometimes you might be dealing with numbers that are not super intuitive. So you can go ahead and plug in mathematical calculations and After Effects will figure that out for you. If we play the animation now, you're going to see that the lines are going to burst out from the center and make a little bit of a starburst type of shape. This is a really cool and pretty sophisticated animation that you can accomplish very easily by using some of the built-in tools within After Effects. We're going to go ahead and create another similar type of burst, but this one will be slightly different. So I will create a new composition to demo this. I'll go ahead and create a new composition. I'll use the exact same settings, except we're going to call this circle burst. As you can see, now I'm working in the circle burst composition. This time I'm going to use my elliptical tool. I will go ahead and specify that I want a solid fill and we'll go ahead and specify a color. So for this one, let's just use an orangey red type of shade. And I'm going to change my stroke to none. I'll click on the name stroke and select no stroke. And now I'm going to go ahead and draw out a circle. I want a perfect circle. I'm going to hold down my shift key to constrain the circle to be perfect. And then I'll release my mouse. Now what I want to do is I want to move the anchor point to the center of the circle. I've already showed you that you can do this by going to layer, transform, center anchor point in layer content. There is another way that you can accomplish this and that is to use the pan behind tool. I'm going to go ahead and hold down my command or control key and double click. This will ensure that the elements anchor point is moved to the center. 
Now I want to position this in the middle of my composition. To do that, I'm going to use my Align Palette. I'll go to Window, Align, and in the Align Palette, Align Layers is set to Composition already. I'm going to horizontally and vertically align the element so that it's right in the middle of my composition. Now we'll come down to the timeline. I'm going to click on Shape Layer 1 and I'm going to rename it Circle. And then we'll go ahead and we'll open up the contents, Ellipse 1, Transform Ellipse, and we're going to make sure our playback head is at the beginning and we're going to set a keyframe for scaling. I will reduce the scaling down to zero. Now I'm going to move my playback head out and we'll place it at 120 and I'm going to change the scaling value to 100. As you would expect, we're going to create an animation of the circle appearing from nothing and then scaling up. I will go ahead and I'll trim the end of this layer and we'll place that about two seconds. Then I'll adjust the work area and make it about two seconds as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the keyframes. We'll right click and choose Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. If we play the animation, you're going to see that the animation starts off kind of quickly and then gets slower as it gets to its ending scale value. Let's pause this and let's open up our graph editor. Once again, we have a speed graph editor with the hump. I'm going to switch back to my selection tool I'll click on the anchor point and I'm going to grab the handle and drag it towards the center, just like we did before. I'm making the speed graph much more intense. If we play our animation now, you'll notice that the speed has been altered, so the animation is going to happen a little bit more quickly. It's happening in the center point of this graph. I'll go ahead and get out of the speed graph, and now that we have this basic scaling animation, we're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate the animation. So I'm going to select Ellipse 1, and then I'm going to use Command or Control D for duplicate. As you can see, it makes a new exact copy of Ellipse 1. So rather than making a new layer, we've actually made two separate circle elements in the same layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click U to open the keyframes, and because we duplicated the ellipse, the keyframes got copied too. I'm going to select the keyframes for ellipse 1, and I'm going to move them forward a few frames in time. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that nothing is selected. We're going to collapse circle and reopen it so that we have access to contents. And from here, I'm going to click under the Add area, and we're going to choose Merge Paths. It's going to add a new property called Merge Paths. I'm going to open this up, and now we're going to change the mode from Add to Subtract. If we play the animation now, you're going to see that one of the ellipses is being subtracted from the other one. So it starts off as a circle with a small hole in the middle, and then it quickly animates to a very thin stroke and then finally disappears. After Effects has a ton of flexibility in creating animations like this, and you can get very creative using the various techniques that we've gone through. You can even use these types of compositions inside of other compositions. I'll be showing you how to do that in a little bit.